Today we're going to talk about conflict, and believe it or not, it does have a function. We're going to review the universal laws, the mythology, the archetype, the terrible twos, ego, personality, and will, and I'm going to give you something I call my personal TED Talk that will cover how to use conflict in your favor so that you can still create positive environment, a positive um, sort of experience through conflict because it does have a function. So I start everything off with universal law. There are eight universal laws that dictate everything in the universe and our psyche is no different. So the two that rule conflict are the law of rhythm and the law of polarity. The law of rhythm states everything flows out and in. Everything has its tides. All things rise and fall. The pendulum swing manifests in everything. The measure of the swing to the right is the measure of the swing to the left. Rhythm compensates. This is important because when we're talking about conflict, and we're going to be talking about conflict statements, whether there's at one or ten or somewhere in between, when we make a swing of conflict to the right, we have some compensation all the way to the left of that equal measure. So we want to identify how we can learn to create conflicts and conflict statements that are less conflictive and maybe not a nine or a ten, but maybe something at a two or a three. So the swings are less impactful. Everything is dual. Everything has poles. Everything has its pair of opposites. This is the law of polarity. It's very similar. Opposites are identical in nature, but are different in degree. This is important. Extremes meet. All truths are but half-truths. All paradoxes may be reconciled. So conflict is neither good or bad. Conflict is just is. It's a part of life. And the swing to the right is the swing to the left. They're identical in nature, these opposites. So fear and courage, which we're going to talk about today. And we're using the element of fire. So some mythology in Greek mythology is associated with conflict, associated with war, with fire, with courage, with fear, the words that we're focusing on today. The first is over here. This is Ares. He is the god of war, that brute strength who we consider a warrior out in the field. And he is born of conflict of the god Zeus and Hera. Zeus and Hera have two children, and Ares is that firstborn, always a result of their fighting. So what he has in his psyche and why conflict is important and why we can never release ourselves of conflict, especially when I tie it back to your parents, is that you were born from Zeus and Hera. Some marriage, some union, it doesn't matter if your parents were married or not, and that union created an Ares-type god. And so conflict is you trying to get, in part, your parents' attention. This is all subconscious. This is all at the psyche level, since this is psychology. But just identify that there is this aspect of ourselves that's trying to get our parents' attention. Athena, on the other hand, is Zeus's child, so only born from Zeus, and she was born from Zeus's head. She's considered the god of war, but wisdom of war, the strategy, the intellect, the cool-headed, rational one. And she is actually born, when she's getting out of Zeus's head, she is born with the help of Hephaestus. Hephaestus cracks open Zeus's head and helmet, and Athena is born. Hephaestus is a metaphor for imagination and curiosity and some divine intelligence. So with the use of our rational mind and our curiosity, our imagination, our divine wisdom, then we actually can move in and strategize and use our fire appropriately and instead of being this brute strength that is self-destructive like Aries. The other goddess is Hestia. I have a saying I say all the time to clients, which is man your fires. And you see her here with a torch. Hestia was the goddess who in the Greek Agora, think of like the marketplace, could never leave her fire. She always had to be with the fire element, taking care of it. And this is symbolic 
of your fire. You always have to be cultivating and taking care of your fires. If you do too much, you can burn. If you use too little because of fear, then you may not have the creation and the momentum that you want in life. This is also related, for those of you who are familiar with the chakras, the third chakra, which is in your gut area. From a physical health standpoint, people that have, for instance, gut issues are not manning their fires. Perhaps they're using the conflict of the illness, of the gut illness, to create conflict so that they don't have to create and move in the world and come to do what they, they were intended to do with their will. And we'll talk about that momentarily. So we want to man our fires. Our fire is also symbolic of our self-worth. The third chakra is the identity. So this is where you are identifying yourself, your self-worth, and your self-love. And so you have to always cultivate that fire first for self, and then you can warm and love and, and be courageous for another, but not at the expense of your own fire. We call this self. There's no such thing as selfless. It's selfish if you give your fire or if you take someone else's fire. And lastly here is Prometheus. Prometheus was the god who actually took the fire element from the gods in Mount Olympus and he stole it and brought it to us, the humans. Yes, we cook our, our food. Yes, we warm ourselves with fire. But the main point of this myth is that fire is the only element that can actually lead to what's called transmutation, belief change, change in yourself. Your parents will see momentarily give you limiting beliefs. And if you don't have the element of fire, you can't shift the consciousness, raise your vibration, and come to do what you came to do because you continuously honor their limiting beliefs. So Prometheus was actually punished by the god, Zeus specifically, when he stole the fire from the gods to the humans because the gods were afraid that if the humans knew how to raise their consciousness, they actually could become gods themselves. They would learn to release themselves of limitations in their mind and they could occupy Mount Olympus. So the archetype that we're going to talk about today in the Jungian or depth psychology language, it would be the warrior, the king, but in astrological language or in planetary archetype, it's the Mars or the Aries archetype of the, the war god. So either way that um, you study archetypes, it means the same thing. Now, the warrior and the king can be either a tyrant ruler or it can be a wise ruler and this is all dependent on how we use our fire energy if we're tyrant we can self-destruct also if we don't lead at all and we stay sort of on the on the sidelines of the battleground in our life then we also are an inward tyrant because we beat ourselves up inwardly in our psyche and we don't fight the fight it's interesting because in the famous book, the Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna, who is the warrior in that story, and Krishna, who's a godhead resemblance in that story, says, Arjuna, you have to fight. He doesn't say fighting is not godlike. He's like, absolutely, you have to fight. One of the things I tell clients all the time is you can't show up to a sword fight with a butter knife. This isn't high vibration. This isn't being the bigger person. You have to match fire with fire. So if you're a tyrant ruler, maybe you're using too much force and too much fire, which self-destructs self. Or if you're not using enough fire, then you're living in fear and you're not letting the courage take you to where you need to go. And again, this is all within, but of course, as within, so without. So are you a tyrant within? Are you a wise ruler within? Or are you a fearful ruler? Are you using your fire too much, too little, or just right? In astrology, we use the planetary archetype of Mars that indicates, of course, warrior and the god Aries that I mentioned already. Some of the key words for this archetype are fear, fire, destruction, creation, which we're going to talk about. Very important. The purpose of conflict is to get in your way of your creation, what you come to do, unless we learn to use it appropriately. And courage. 
So in terms of psychological age, the, and even though in my theory, this all started at conception, then pregnancy, and then birth, in our zero to seven years, where we are gathering the story, this is where we would talk about the terrible twos. Mars as a planet goes around the entire zodiac every two years. So actually every two years, we are sort of getting an intention, an initiation, a terrible twos sort of journey, if you will, to propel forward. So let's talk about the first cycle, which is the terrible twos. This is when Mars is what we call conjunct Mars. So the energy of the warrior starts to activate in the child's psyche. It's the first round of the warrior archetype. Mars is the planetary archetype and it dictates what we do as a warrior. We start at the terrible twos to exemplify our will and we say no and we start lying and we start throwing things and we yell and scream and the parents sort of have a, 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 a fit. What are they going to do with the child? Well, there's a few things that happen. If you have permissive parents, those parents do not set a limit on your free will, on your will, and you may burn the house down. You might move into the world pretty narcissistic, thinking that you don't have any control on your fire. Or if you have authoritarian or authoritative parents, they might put too many boundaries. Authoritative parents are those that kind of put just right. They let you live out your will, but they perhaps might put some boundaries. Authoritarian parents will shut it down. They're in charge. So it's the permissive and the authoritarian parents that cause most of the problem, but authoritative parents too, they're trying to put a boundary. And so in your life, as you live your uh, every two-year cycle, you want to show up for yourself as an authoritarian parent in the sense that you start to put a boundary on your fire, not too, too little or not too, too much. And so parenting style, of course, here is relevant in the storyline. Every two years after that, we try to use the energy to move forward in life. However, if we were put too many boundaries, and oftentimes even if we had permissive parents and we're not given enough boundaries, fear sets in and we misdirect our fire. What it turns into is conflict. We start to create conflict because what we're trying to use is the energy. Conflict and creation is the same energy. Conflict, creation, and fire, same energy. Conflict, creation, fire, king, ruler, warrior, same archetype, same energy. So we can either create conflict that self-destroys us, our relationships, our job, our potential, or we sit on the sidelines of life, we're fearful, we're afraid to create anything in the world, so we create conflict to direct the energy. But the energy must live itself out, and these are the options that we have in our psyche. So between zero to seven, we develop our ego and our personality. I already talked to you about two years old where we get the storyline, where the will starts to develop with this first round of, of Mars. Between zero to seven, personality studies say and personality theories that we get ego and personality. So ego and personality are not bad. Ego actually indicates you are separate from me. We need a boundary. I need to know that you are separate. You have a different body. My mom is not me. She's not in my head. She's not reading my mind. Our thoughts get to be private. Our personality is more like the mask that we wear so that we can stand out from others. When these three work together, ego, personality, and will, they actually lead us to our life's purpose. They actually direct the fire appropriately and eventually lead us to a very important stage, which is called individuation. So we need proper use of ego and personality, and then the will can move us forward. Let me bring you back to this archetype of Mars. The circle is spirit, so our directed spirit as we came to do in the world, and the Mars arrow directs it, and the way that we direct it is by using the ego, personality, and will together. 
So the metaphor of fire or the element of fire or the symbol of fire is the only one that humans are in control of. When we are conceived, we get our thoughts. That is the air element. We cannot change our thoughts, but we can transmute them with fire. When we are in our pregnancy stage, we get emotion. We cannot change the emotion. We can transmute or feel the emotion into a feeling with fire. Our body is the earth element. We can't change our body. Our biology is what it is, but we can have it work optimally. What's called our Agni or digestive fire using the food and nutrition we give it through fire. But the fire element is the only one we are actually in control of in our psyche. If we use too little, we're living in fear. We're living on the sidelines. We're not creating and our conflict will actually be bigger. If we use too much, we're destroying ourselves and others, and our fire is destructive. There's no room for creation of anything else because we're too busy destroying. Conflict in our life and our conflict statements we'll talk about momentarily is how we measure fire and control fire in our psyche. Conflict. We all create conflict. It's a part of life. However, the level of fire, fear, courage, or fear, destruction, or courage determines how much we create and whether we're creating conflict out of courage rather than fear. We want to create it out of courage rather than fear. There are times where fear is appropriate, but most of the time by using conflict statements and conflict numbers, we're going to identify why we're creating the conflict and what we're, we're, what we're afraid of. When you create conflict, you're going to write one conflict statement, which is one sentence that describes the conflict, and you're going to give it a number from 1 to 10. This will determine how much fear you have. Whatever is left over from that number is the only amount of energy you have for actually courage and creation. If you're too busy creating fear internally, the fire will be directed internally and it show up, for instance, as illness or adrenal fatigue or fibromyalgia or chronic fatigue syndrome. If you have too much conflict at a 10, then you're burning things or destroying relationships or opportunities. You're not using your fire correctly. You're destroying and it again is based in fear because you don't have the courage to do what you came to do. So we'll see different ways on how we can use this. So what is a conflict statement? A conflict statement is when something happens in your life, any conflict on a scale of one to 10, I cannot reiterate this enough. If your pen falls on the floor and it annoys you, if you get into a car accident, if you get into a divorce, if you break your toenail, any conflict, anything on a scale of one to 10 that is viewed as disruptive, annoying, conflictive, deserves a conflict statement and deserves what we're going to talk, which is the personal TED talk. Do not minimize anything that shows up. Everything is an opportunity to see what you're afraid of or what you're being guided to correct, uh, to create with your divine will and purpose. So you're going to give it one sentence. Most people like to go and give it a paragraph or three hour conversation. Not necessary. Sum it up in your journal in one sentence. For example, the fight with my husband was that he ignored me and failed to make me a priority. That is it. That is one sentence. You're going to sum up the conflict in one sentence. That sentence later on we'll see resembles one of the parents which you're trying to get attention from. But first you're going to give it a number from 1 to 10. In this person's case, they gave it an 8. Conflicts that are low level, 1, 2, or 3, allow more room. Let's say if it's a 3, there's 7 energy left to create. We can use our fire to now create, move forward in our life, use courage to live out our divine will and purpose. Conflicts that are higher in nature, 8, 9, and 10, leave very little room for creation. Therefore, these statements are important and this, the number is important because you're trying to identify why you create so much conflict 
because what you're doing is you're using up the fire energy because you're afraid of using it for creation. There's something that is keeping you that you don't want to move forward in life and then conflict is the way that you deter that. Conflict number. It ranges from 1 to 10. Every conflict statement falls into the range of 1 to 10. The one I gave you, the example, was an 8. It speaks to how much fear this person has. If you create conflicts that are an 8, a 9, a 10, there's very little left for courage. In this example, only 2 is left for courage. Therefore, the movement forward, the creation in the world... The movement to do what you came to do, build what you came to build, is stifled. So in my personal life, prior to understanding this and shifting my limiting beliefs, I used to create a lot of drama and a lot of conflict. You would think that it's not my fault I appeared as the victim, as often is the case. We think we are victimized. We are not. We are always creating conflict from the psyche in order to manipulate the fire because we're fearful or we're destructive. Rarely are we courageous and working for ourselves because we were not taught this as children. We were taught to limit our will as was appropriate at two years old, but not at 20, 30, 40 when we're stifling our life. The bigger the conflict you create in your psyche, the more fear you have. So all of that conflict I created in my Netflix drama worthy life, 8, 9, 10, was because I was afraid. You wouldn't have known that. You saw me yell and scream and speak up and you saw that I was very overtly fiery. But what it was was to cover a fear because the conflict level indicates how much fear you have in your psyche. Do not look at these things from an external perspective. These are deep psychological wounds. These are deep psychological and subconscious programs. So the earthly world or what the person appears to be is delusional because really they're not showing up in the world fearful perhaps if they have a lot of fire and tend and destructive and creating and speaking up for themselves but rather they're hiding a wound from childhood where their will was maybe perhaps tied up the more fear you have the more tied up in conflict the less fire you have to create and live your divine purpose conflicts can be with yourself people that tend to have health issues will oftentimes direct it towards self. So that's the conflict. For instance, the, the gut issues or adrenal fatigue or chronic fatigue syndrome. And those are just examples. It can be any illness. Other people, places, things, and situations. In my particular model, every single person, place, thing, or situation is a representation of mom and dad. Mom and dad were the ones that limited your fire. They imposed boundaries or didn't. They limited your fire. So therefore, everybody shows up as a representation. And you'll see that momentarily. Anything that is an annoyance counts for a conflict statement and a conflict number. The more you do this, the better, because then you're going to start seeing how often you create conflict, but more importantly, at what number. The more you see a trend, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, the more you're going to identify how much energy you have for creation and moving forward in the world. And of course, how much fear you have. So in my model, you resolve conflict with a personal TED Talk. I do want to say this has nothing to do with TED, the series of those TED Talks. This is just T for thought, E for emotion, D for desire. I said before, at the moment of conception, you get your thoughts. They're limiting. They're low-level consciousness. They're impure thoughts because none of us have thoughts that are always pure. So the conflict is directly linked to an impure thought that you're having, a judgment, for instance, about someone or something that you don't like. E stands for the emotion. That's for your pregnancy that you learn the emotions to attach to the impure thoughts. And D stands for desire, simply the body that you got at birth, which of course has to honor desires you need to eat you need to sleep, you need to meet your desirous needs from your body perspective. So that's simply why that's called a TED Talk. 
With each conflict statement and each conflict number, you're going to do the personal TED Talk. There's three questions. Does the conflict, that is the conflict statement, resemble my mother or my father? So let's go back to the example. The fight with my husband was that he ignored me and failed to make me a priority. Would this represent your mother or your father? Who failed to make you a priority, mom or dad? That is the purpose of that statement. This is symbolic. The subconscious, the psyche is not literal. So you're using a generalization. If it's not you that they made not a priority in their life, maybe they didn't make themselves a priority. So you kind of want to work with a symbolic nature of the conflict statement rather than looking at it being so literal, although it could be. So as soon as you identify the mother or your father, you're already set up as the terrible twos. You're already trying to show them that you have more fire and you want them to either limit it, you want them to set a boundary, you want to seek attention, and you get into what I call child mode. So conflict is an opportunity to go back to that two-year terrible two phase. Again, it started at conception, but now we're attached to the story. And at that year, when they impose boundaries and limits on your will or did not, you're trying to go back there and break that down. You're trying to uh, reenact that, so to speak, in your psyche to break down boundaries and barriers that they put or beg for someone to put a limit to your fire if you're very self-destructive. The second question is, what don't I like about the conflict? This is a judgment. This is linked to a thought that you're having and it's a low level consciousness thought. It is linked to an impure thought. It's a judgment. You don't like that you're thinking this, but you do. It's fine. Judgments are confessions and they're great. So we want to know what we don't like about the conflict. The conflict and what we judge about the conflict is what we're judging about ourselves. The impure thoughts are the ones that we have about ourselves. This is linked directly to the fear. How much fear we have or how much fear we don't have that we want someone to say, hey, you're overreacting. Hey, stop that. You're making a mess of your life. We're asking mom and dad to show up and set a boundary or to not set a boundary. The subconscious, and that's why I shared the law of polarity and the law of rhythm, zero to a hundred, the, the same coin, different side. We want them to show up and set a boundary because we don't know how to navigate our own fire and we're too self-destructive and they don't, they're permissive or they're authoritarian and they put way too many boundaries and we want to knock those down because we need to create something in the world. The third question is, what does it prove about me when I create this conflict? It's usually linked to some worthy or unworthiness. If you create this fight with your spouse, it might prove that I'm unlovable. And what we want to do is that we need mom and dad. We want to prove that we need mom and dad to come and set a limit for us because we're incapable of determining what that safety limit is for ourselves. And this is not true. The moment you do the TED Talk, you're already deflating the conflict. You're taking personal responsibility, TPR, So the reason of the personal TED Talk is to get you out of victimization, no need for conflict or a parent to show up. You are an adult. You know how to put limits on yourself, but yet not too many limits that you're not able to breathe and create what you came to create with your will in this lifetime. So what we want to do is we want to reduce the use of misdirected fire. Creating conflict is simply about getting your parents' attention. If they didn't give you any attention, you might tend towards larger conflict because you need to do something bigger, like burn the house down, for them to actually parent you. If they gave you too many limits, you might do smaller conflict, but you might also do bigger conflicts because now you're like, I'm so sick, I need you to pay attention to me. If you had it too much or you had it too little, and most of us that was the case, at two years old, you're linking the conflict to the the will and the fire at two years old and the terrible twos. Most of us were limited way too much or not enough, and what happens is we never learned 
The authoritative parent is very rare. We never really learned to use the fire too much. Uh, we learned to use it too much or not enough. We didn't really just learn it the Goldilocks way just right. It wasn't even so much directed to your parenting. My model starts at the moment of conception. How are your parents using their own fire? What were they courageous with? What were they fearful with? What were they self-destructive in? The, the story from zero to seven just gives you your personal mythology. So now you have a story to deconstruct. But this really started way back at the moment of conception. Your conflict is simply a temper tantrum for them to notice you in your head. This is happening at the psyche and the subconscious level. And so you're trying to get somebody to put a limit on you because you do not trust that you know how much limits to put, too little or too much. If you do the personal TED Talk, not only do you gain TPR, personal responsibility, get out of victim, but reduce is the fire that you use in conflict so that you actually can use it for creation, which is what you're here to do. So I have a sentence that says, man your fires, and I mentioned before that Hestia man the fires of the Agora. Conflict is inevitable. But as you start to use your fire for creation instead of destruction or fear, where you sit on the sidelines, you actually start to man your fires. Your digestion improves. You speak up for yourself. You start having self-worth, self-love, self-acceptance. You don't just give away your time, money, resources. You don't let people violate your boundaries. You hold fast on your throne and others come to you, you don't necessarily have to give up your fire and your self-worth in order to seek your needs to get met and self-acceptance and self-love from others. It's a win-win. Using Prometheus here, he brought the fire to us so that we can raise consciousness. If you man your fires, you give permission for others to man their own. There is a reason that we have fire element. It is to transmute limiting beliefs that we got at conception from our parents about self-worth, about self-acceptance, about self-love. You are worth it and you don't need conflict and others creating conflict with you in order to learn this lesson. If you have a need to seek attention, this is one way that you will use conflict, but if you reduce the conflict number, you'll still get your needs met calling attention and finding your parents in representations of person, place, thing, and situation, but you'll get that emotional hit from your parents paying attention to you, so to speak, that attention-seeking need that we all have, but we'll actually continue to move into the world with fear, without fear, with courage, and appropriate fire so that we can transmute beliefs and then light the way for others to do the same. So fire, not fear. Fear is simply a misuse of your fire, as is self-destruction. The more fear, the more high-level conflict you will create, and the same with self-destruction. The more fear and self-destruction, the higher the level of conflict will be, because now you can use your fire misdirected to cover up the fact that you're not courageous. But if you use your fire appropriately and you just create lower level conflicts, the more you do the TED Talk, the more you'll see that the conflict levels will go less and less and less. Then you have the conflict, you get the hit from your parents, you're still a child, you want them to pay attention to you, you're having your, your temper tantrum, but it's not self-destructive and it's not creating conflict and it's not based on fear, but rather you're still getting that sort of psychological hit that you need attention and someone to kind of remind you and nudge you that a boundary is okay, but now you can use that fire to create. The courage to create. You came here with a divine purpose, which was to individuate from your parents and the limits they imposed on you. You still are your parents. You're not gonna veer that far away from their identity, their value system, your upbringing, your genetics, obviously. But you do use fire to individuate and find your own path and forge your own path. So this work reminds you that you are indeed them, but you have permission to veer off 
and go live your own path with your fire, appropriate use of your fire internally. The other thing the fire is, is yes, you have limits. You do not have unlimited potential, but you do have right to raise consciousness, use the fire element to raise the vibration and the consciousness level from the level you inherited at the moment of conception and the limiting beliefs. You get to burn those down. You get to set new limits for yourself. If you stay fearful, you honor these limits. And if you self-destruct with the misuse of fire, you're still honoring the limits. Zero to a hundred, all or none. Same thing as the parents because either one show that you're not worthy. Have the courage to create conflict, learn from it, and use it to honor your parents at a two or a three. Yeah, mom and dad, I need you to remind me that I am not God, that I am limited in the body, that you have set some rules for me to abide by. Great. Those could be your value systems. Those could be some beliefs that, that don't hurt you, that are limited, but don't hurt you. But with the remaining fire, create the courage, create with courage the life you came to live, your purpose uniting your ego, personality, and will, and stay on your throne. Thank you very much.